Dumb Husky and His White Cat Shizun. Chapter 209 Shizun, isn't this exciting? Mo Ran choked. Shwemen was indeed formidable. With this ruckus, whatever haze his past life had clouded his mind with, there was not even a trace of it left. Right now, his mind was full of resentment and lust. He just couldn't understand why Shwemen had to come and talk to Chu Wanning at this time just how much free time did he have? But he couldn't persuade Chu Wanning. He propped himself up and looked under the bed. Then he straightened up and kissed Chu Wanning, saying, No. You. Don't be angry. It's not that I don't want to listen to you. Mo Ran said, but this bed is too low. I won't be able to go under the bed. Chu Wanning. There's no wardrobe in this room and there's only one window facing outside. I don't have anywhere I can hide. You have to tell him to go. Chu Wanning thought about it and could only say out to Shui Meng, if there's anything, let's talk about it tomorrow. I'm already going to sleep. Please, I'm just going to sit in for a little while. Shui Meng's voice was full of grievance and there was a faint nasal sound in it as he said, Shizun, my heart is really restless. There are some things that I want to ask you face to face. Otherwise, I won't be able to sleep until tomorrow. Mo Ran was incomparably annoyed by his soft pleading. He also wanted to know what exactly Shui Meng had to say tonight, so he propped himself up and looked left and right. Suddenly, he thought of an idea. He whispered it in Chu Wanning's ear. Chu Wanning's face immediately darkened, you're too ridiculous. Then let him go quickly. Chu Wanning wanted to say something, but then he heard Shui Meng rustling sound outside the door. Thinking that Shui Meng rarely insisted on pestering him like this, Chu Wanning silently cursed and pushed Mo Ran away, saying, just this once. Also, hide the clothes on the floor. Don't miss them. Shui Meng waited outside for a while. Seeing that Chu Wanning still hadn't agreed, although he felt uncomfortable, he still persisted in calling out, She's on. I heard you. Come in. After getting permission, Shui Meng pushed the door open. As soon as he entered, he frowned. There was an indescribable faint smell in the room, but it was too faint. He couldn't tell what it was, but it smelled familiar to him. As expected, Chu Wanning was already sleeping. The thick curtains on his bed had been drawn down, covering the whole bed inside. When he heard Shui Meng come in, he raised his hand and lifted half of the curtains, revealing a hazy sleeping face. His eyes were half closed, as if he had just woken up and was still very sleepy. The corners of his eyes were slightly red and moist. He glanced at Shui Meng. Shui Meng was a little embarrassed and muttered, She's on, I'm sorry for disturbing your sleep. It's fine. Sit down. Shui Meng sat by the table. Chu Wanning asked, What do you want to talk to me about? I. Shui Meng seemed very conflicted. After returning, he carefully thought for a while and suddenly remembered why the necklace on Mo Ran's neck looked so familiar on the way to Rufeng sect, Mo Ran had bought a necklace for Chu Wanning. At that time, he had looked at it carefully and liked it. He felt that it was very beautiful and also wanted it for himself. At that time, Mo Ran had personally told him that it was the last piece. The more he thought about this matter, the more he felt strange and uneasy. He was a person who couldn't keep his thoughts to himself. After hesitating for a long time, he finally couldn't bear it and came to this place. But facing Chu Wanning's gaze, Shui Meng hesitated again. He really didn't know how to express himself. After pondering for a long time, Shui Meng said in a muffled voice, Shizun, don't you feel that Mo Ran, was acting a little strange? As soon as he said this, Chu Wanning and Mo Ran's heart skipped a beat. Chu Wanning's expression didn't show any changes though. He asked. What do you mean? Shizun doesn't notice anything. Shui Meng found it very difficult to speak. After hesitating for a long time, 
he seemed to have finally thrown caution to the wind and braced himself, I feel like he's, uh, trying very hard to please Shizun. Shuemen naturally didn't dare to say that he was pursuing Shizun, but he stole a glance at Chu Wanning. His eyes were full of worry and panic. Chu Wanning said. Why do you say that? Actually, it's like this. Today, I... It was hard to back down. Shuemen braced himself and said, Today, I... I saw something on his neck. Mo Ran, who was hiding behind the bed curtain, was shocked. He raised his hand and touched the crystal pendant hanging around his neck. His expression changed slightly. Chu Wanning didn't realize what Shuemen had seen. He still looked at him with furrowed brows, waiting for him to continue. After waiting for a while, Shuemeng still didn't say anything. Instead, a large, warm hand touched his leg. With that, Chu Wanning's expression suddenly changed. He thought that Mo Ran was going to do something absurd. He hurriedly turned his head while Shuemeng wasn't looking. He looked into the depths of the bed covered by the curtain and saw Mo Ran pointing at his necklace, shaping his mouth to remind him. Chu Wanning understood immediately. He thought for a moment and said, Did you see the same necklace as mine on Mo Ran's body? No, 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 I didn't mean anything else by it. Shuemen was anxious and embarrassed. He waved his hands, I just thought it was a little strange. I. It's fine. Chu Wanning said, I gave back that necklace to him. Ah, she's unreturned it to him. I was not comfortable wearing it, so I returned it to him. Shuemeng immediately let out a breath of relief. His face, which had been pale since he came, finally had some color in it. He smiled, I was wondering what was going on. At that time, he clearly told me that it was the last one. I thought he... He kept going back and forth so many times. In the end, he just slapped his forehead and said dejectedly, She's un, please pretend I didn't mention anything. My mouth is too stupid. I don't know how to explain. AI, I'm really foolish. Chu Wanning didn't know how to lie, so he didn't know how to persuade him otherwise. In fact, there were many things in the current situation that went against his conscience. With just a few casual words, he could completely cut off the relationship between Mo Ran and himself while Shui Meng only wanted to say this one sentence. As long as Chu Wanning said no, even if the truth was in front of Shui Meng, he would choose to believe his Shizun. But it was this kind of complete trust that made Chu Wanning unable to say it out loud. So, he could only silently watch Shui Meng in front of him, scratching his ears and cheeks while sighing. He didn't want to say anything too absolute. He watched as Shuemen kept apologizing, saying that he was too stupid and rash. Chu Wanning suddenly felt very distressed and guilty. Although his expression didn't change much, still like an ancient well without ripples. He slowly said, Shuemen. Shuemen suddenly stopped and waited for him to speak. What should he say? Should he say, I'm sorry. I hope you won't be disappointed in me in the end. I hope you'll still be willing to recognize me as your Shizun. He couldn't say it. These words were too soft, too sweet, and too cruel. Why should he ask Shuemeng to be willing to accept him no matter what happened? People had to face meeting and separation, growth, and change. Just like bamboo shoots growing taller. Sooner or later, the outer layer of the bamboo shoots would peel off, then wither and turn to mud. Shuemeng still had a long life ahead of him. There weren't many people who could continuously accompany another person for these long years. The past like the old people, they would all become the skin that the snake shed, the discarded outer layer of the bamboo shoot. Shuemeng waited and waited, but didn't hear anything else. He opened his round eyes uneasily and muttered, She's on. Nothing. Chu Wanning said faintly, I feel like you're overthinking things. Now, I want you to go find Elder Tanlang and ask for two bottles of taper scented dew so you can drink it. Shui Meng. 
Is there anything else? Shuemeng thought for a moment and said, There is. What is it? Does Shizun really wants to accept Nangong Si as a disciple? Shuemeng had been holding this matter in his heart for a while. Then, then wouldn't he become my eldest martial brother? You care about this matter? Yes. Shuemeng awkwardly rubbed the corner of his clothes. I was the first before. If he's included, then I. Seeing him like this, the haze in Chu Wanning's heart faded slightly. He couldn't help but smile slightly. When Shue Meng was young, he loved to act spoiled with Madame Wang. After Mo Ran came, he loved to compete with Mo Ran in front of their parents. He didn't expect that even though he was already in his twenties, he still couldn't change this habit. A single Nangong Si had ruffled up his peacock tail feathers. He was still brooding about being first and second disciple. Chu Wanning said, there's no difference. Everything remained the same. That won't do. I don't want him to be the eldest martial brother. Although he was the first to become a disciple, he was the last to be acknowledged by Shi Zun. I don't mind him joining us, but can he be the last and be the youngest martial brother? Shui Meng was very serious about this. In the future, I'll call him Nangong Shi Di. As you wish. Shui Meng got a little happier. When he became happy, the more that he didn't want to leave yet. Mo Ran was getting more and more irritated as he waited on the bed. He thought to himself, why does he have to be so talkative? Why isn't he leaving yet? Shui Meng indeed didn't leave. Shui Meng even said, I still have something to ask Shizun. M.M. Chu Wanning was very indifferent. Go ahead. Mo Ran. Mo Ran told me today that Shizun promised him that he would be given a handkerchief. Chu Wanning asked, that. M.M., but I haven't made one yet. Do you want one too? Shui Meng's eyes immediately lit up. Can I have one too? I originally planned to give each of you one. Chu Wanning said, it's just that I had been busy, so it was delayed. Hearing this, Shui Meng was pleasantly surprised, but Mo Ran was completely stunned. Wasn't. Wasn't he the only one who could have one? Mo Ran instantly felt wronged. However, Chu Wanning was talking to Shui Meng, so he didn't notice Mo Ran's unsettled expression at all. Shui Meng's gloominess was swept away as he happily talked to Chu Wanning about the embroidery of the handkerchief he wanted. On the other side, Mo Ran felt more and more uncomfortable, especially when he saw Chu Wanning and Shui Meng talking so happily. Even though he knew there was nothing going on between them, he still felt very uncomfortable. Palia is difficult to sew. If you want Palia pattern, I'll go and ask Madame Wang when we get back. It is difficult. Shui Meng was stunned, if it is troublesome, then Shi Zun didn't have to sew it. Shi Zun can just do whatever Shi Zun is good at. What pattern is Shi Zun good at? Actually, I'm not very good at any flower or bird decorations, Chu Wanning was a bit embarrassed, and coughed lightly, my best is the Heart Sutra of the Prajnaparamitha. Chu Wanning said, when I was young at Wuabei Temple, Huizhui taught me. I. Before he finished speaking, he suddenly frowned, his expression changed slightly and then he suddenly pursed his lips. Shui Meng was stunned, Shizun, what's wrong with you? Chu Wanning actually seemed to hesitate for a while, and then said, nothing. Do you want anything else? Yes, there is, there is one more thing, but I forgot. Let me think. Shui Meng lowered his head and thought again. After he lowered his eyes, Chu Wanning almost couldn't help but gasp lightly and a pair of angry eyes suddenly glared at the person in the depths of the bed. Mo Ran had originally only done a few ambiguous erotic actions in order to urge Chu Wanning to rush Shui Meng to leave as soon as possible. Unexpectedly, when he turned and looked at him, the corners of his eyes slightly turned red and he couldn't resist. Suddenly, a fire ignited in his heart. He was originally a very possessive person who was very crude and primitive in certain aspects. 
The reason why he endured and restrained himself was because he loved Chu Wanning too much, and he was feeling guilty, too. This love and guilt seemed to be the shackles on his neck, so he didn't do anything excessive on bed with him. But at this moment, his irritation and jealousy broke these shackles. His moist dark eyes stared at Chu Wanning silently and dangerously for a while, and then he suddenly did something rash. He leaned over and at a place hidden from Shui Meng by a curtain, he burrowed under the brocade quilt and climbed up Chu Wanning's slender and strong legs. The surroundings were dark and the beddings blocked out all the light, so his senses became more and more stimulated. He could clearly feel that Chu Wanning was slightly trembling. Suddenly, Chu Wanning put a hand on his shoulder, his five fingers burning hot, holding onto his strong and broad shoulders, and pushed him to the side. This was the only thing Chu Wanning could do to stop him from under the blanket. However, this only fueled Mo Ran's desire to take him apart. Shui Men was still talking, but what he said was not important. Mo Ran only listened absent-mindedly. When he heard him say something like, it doesn't matter what she's unembroidered. I'm sure I would like whatever she's undid. Mo Ran became more and more angry. His breath was already at the base of Chu Wanning's thigh. He knew where that tender desire was, but he didn't touch it. He turned his face, his eyelashes fluttering. He kissed the skin on Chu Wanning's inner thigh, sucking and licking it, leaving behind an ambiguous mark that was destined to be difficult to fade away. Chu Wanning trembled even more. Right now, he was probably regretting his decision to leave Mo Ran on the side. His fingernails dug deeply into Mo Ran's shoulder, but he couldn't stop this madman. She's on, are you listening? N. Mo Ran waited, his lips hovering not far from Chu Wanning's cock. His hot and moist breath brushed against Chu Wanning's newly erected cock. He didn't move waiting for a daring and exciting opportunity. Shui Meng asked something. It didn't matter what it was and Mo Ran didn't pay it any mind, so he didn't hear it clearly. But Chu Wanning had to answer him. The moment Chu Wanning opened his mouth to answer, Mo Ran moved closer under the blanket, greedily sucking Chu Wanning's cock. Chu Wanning's entire body tensed up in an instant. The jut on his throat bobbed and his fingers had already scratched Mo Ran's skin. But Mo Ran didn't care at all. He was excited by Chu Wanning's reaction, excited by the feelings they shared in secret. Of course, he knew Chu Wanning's tolerance. Even if he pulled down his underpants and plunged it in, he wouldn't make a sound. So, Mo Ran acted unrestrained. Of course, he also knew that although Chu Wanning was extremely reluctant, the pleasure of his body was real. The cock in his mouth was hard and hot, the plump and smooth shaft was pressed against his throat. It wasn't a pleasant sensation but when he took it this deep, he sucked it sweetly. With his cock inside Mo Ran's warm mouth, Chu Wanning was deeply stimulated. However, he still managed to endure and suppress his emotions while answering Shui Meng's questions. His self-control, whether in this life or the previous one, was just as amazing. He suppressed it very well, but his voice got slightly deeper than usual, his speech slightly slower. If it wasn't for the fact that Mo Ran was on his bed right now, he wouldn't have dared to believe that this man was enjoying the ultimate pleasure and stimulation. Finally, Shui Men nodded and said, I understand. Since you understand, then quickly go back. Chu Wanning said, don't let your thoughts run wild. It's late already. Shui Meng stood up and said, then, Shih Zun, I'll be leaving. That's right, can I help Shih Zun put out the lights? Yes. Coincidentally, Mo Ran deep throated him at that moment. Chu Wanning opened his mouth slightly, but didn't make a sound. However, his brows were furrowed, his eyelashes trembled and his face was slightly red. Shui Meng hesitated and asked, Shih Zun, do you have a fever? No. But why is your face a little red? In his worry, Shui Meng didn't consider his action. As he stood up, he raised his hand and touched Chu Wanning's forehead. 
This was something that Chu Wanning never expected. On one hand, such an erotic act was being done to him by Mo Ran and on the other hand, his forehead was being touched by another disciple of his who were completely clueless. In front of him was Xue Meng's concerned gaze while Mo Ran was enthusiastically sucking his cock under the bed with his warm mouth wrapped around his cock and his head bobbing, imitating a thrusting motion. The pleasure was almost overpowering and the shame was about to drown him. He had no choice but to use every bone, every inch of flesh to restrain himself, to stop himself from gasping and moaning. It's not hot. Xue Meng muttered, she's on, do you feel discomfort anywhere? Mo Ran thought to himself, discomfort? How could it be uncomfortable? Your Shizun is probably going to die from pleasure. It's all because you're here that I can't make him feel better. Why aren't you leaving yet? As the complaint in his heart grew deeper and deeper, Xue Meng was finally sent away by Chu Wanning. Xue Meng was very dedicated. He helped his Shizun put out the lights, said goodbye, and then walked out. As soon as he heard the sound of the door closing, Chu Wanning went mad with anger. He suddenly threw open the blanket and grabbed Mo Ran's hair, forcing him to come over. Then he slapped him neither lightly nor heavily, and scolded him in a low voice in the darkness, You bastard! Ugh! In response, Mo Ran panted anxiously and his bright black eyes were blurred with desire. When in throngs of passion, most men were like beasts and when they were coupling with their beloved, they were beasts who had swallowed aphrodisiacs. Mo Ran was slapped but he didn't feel any pain at all. Instead, he grabbed the other man's hand and pressed it on the bed, and then tore off the last of his clothes. When their skin touched, both of them couldn't help but moan. Mo Ran didn't say much, but the light in his eyes was somewhat crazed. His cock was so swollen to the point that that it hurt with its round cock head oozing with sparkling liquid. He caressed Chu Wanning's lower abdomen with intoxication, and that liquid desire made Chu Wanning's abdomen wet and sticky. Now that this fire was burning his entire body, he bullied Chu Wanning so fiercely. Only then, did Chu Wanning stop holding himself back from moaning and letting out a sound. Only then did Mo Ran stop holding himself back from wanting to lift Chu Wanning's leg and insert his cock inside him. His muscles tightened and he kissed him fiercely, rubbing against him mindlessly. He only wanted to be inside him, burn his heart with desire. His primitive nature drove him to only want to penetrate his body, to completely conquer him, to tear him apart, to make him accept him, to swallow him, to be fucked by him and to become his own. Get up. Darling, get up. He muttered. Hurry, if you don't hurry up, I won't be able to take it anymore. Put your legs closer together. Taking advantage of the last bit of rationality that was slowly disappearing, Mo Ran murmured hoarsely. He pulled Chu Wanning up, and just like last time, he inserted his swollen cock between his thighs, thrusting and rubbing violently. He was thrusting so hard that sweat gathered on his chest and the light in his eyes got extremely bright. He held onto Chu Wanning's waist, and because of this kind of sensation, he felt more and more passionate, and more, and more energetic. He didn't say too many dirty words and only fiercely, with all his might, rubbed his burning cock against Chu Wanning's cock with every thrust. His cock slid inside the gap between Chu Wanning's thighs, his pubic hair brushing against the skin of his thighs, his heavy ball slapped against Chu Wanning's ass. Chu Wanning was knocked into a daze by him while Mo Ran's other hand reached over to hold Chu Wanning's erect cock, rubbing and stroking it. Ah! Mo Ran bit his shoulder, nibbling it and then said softly, Don't shout, the soundproofing here is not good. I'm afraid Shui Meng hasn't gone far yet. Chu Wanning didn't make a sound anymore. His eyes were misty and he was lying on the bed being pleasured by Mo Ran, bearing the fierce impact of the sharp shaft again and again. At this moment, that thick and terrifying huge thing was going in and out between his legs. He didn't dare to imagine what it would feel like to have that thing inside of him as he trembled slightly. Chu Wanning come three times. A fact that almost blew his mind away. 
he remembered how he held Mo Ran tightly and kissed him torridly and felt an explicable heartache. Chu Wanning kissed Mo Ran in a clumsy manner but Mo Ran couldn't take the stimulation and panted, don't incite me more. Chu Wanning was stunned. Incite him? Who incited whom? He found it amusing but at the same time can't help but felt incredulous. Then Chu Wanning said, are you expecting me to let you do all the work? Mo Ran leaned over and kissed him on the ear, it's all right. Just leave everything to me. There was a trace of bitterness in his tone and under his nose, a storm was brewing. The room was very dark, but when Chu Wanning looked up, he could clearly see the restraint in Mo Ran's eyes. Chu Wanning didn't know exactly what he was thinking, but he suddenly had a surging thought. Before Mo Ran could react, he flipped them over and sat on Mo Ran's waist, holding Mo Ran's hands and looking down at him. Mo Ran was slightly shocked, she's on, you. Chu Wanning didn't make a sound. His phoenix eyes were very bright while his ears were burning red, today, I already told you to follow my lead. Don't make me repeat this sentence. Then he slowly got up and lower his body down on Mo Ran. Mo Ran watched his movements and felt his scalp go numb. All the blood in his body was rushing and screaming as he said, don't mess around. If you, you won't be able to move tomorrow. But Chu Wanning turned a deaf ear to him. When this person was being stubborn, he would really insist on getting his own way and didn't care about other people's words. Mo Ran's back was numb. On one hand, he really wanted Chu Wanning to ride him on his own initiative. But on the other hand, he really didn't want Chu Wanning to do such a thing at this time. He knew that once he penetrated inside him after enduring for this long, there was no way he would want to do it only once. Thinking back on the days and nights of his previous life, when was there ever a time when he got satisfied by doing Chu Wanning only once? On the frenzied night when he fed Chu Wanning aphrodisiac, he tormented the moaning man throughout the night. He even ended up having dry orgasm but still didn't want to stop fucking into Chu Wanning and filling him to the brim with his sticky cum. He rubbed his legs, their tongues tangled and he penetrated deep inside him while sprouting dirty words that would make other people blush but only made their hearts beat faster and faster. Does it feel good? She's on, you're still sucking me good down there. I cummed so much, did it satisfy you? At that time, he even forced Chu Wanning to lower his head and look at the place where they were connected. Then he intimately reached out and stroked Chu Wanning's tight lower abdomen and said slowly and hoarsely, Your stomach is full of my semen, can you feel it? He said those absurd words with his eyes full of lust and desire, like a wild beast. Is it enough to make she's unpregnant with this venerable one's child? Hmm. He thrust inside again and because of this action, the sticky love liquid that was left behind from the many times before seeped out from the edges where the two of them were connected. The aphrodisiac has yet to dissipate from Chu Wanning's body. Mo Ran looked at the man in his arms trembling and being stimulated because of his little action. He couldn't help but let out a soft groan and his eyes couldn't help but darken. In the end, he couldn't bear it anymore, so he began to play with him again and again, to pleasure him. At that time, he detested that he was the emperor of the cultivation world. His desire for Chu Wanning had always been so strong, to the point that he just wanted to find a room to lock Chu Wanning up, do nothing every day, see no one and only focus on making love with Chu Wanning. He wanted to let Chu Wanning lie down on the bed and be fucked by him. He wanted to press him against the wall and fuck him. He wanted him on top of the bed with his long legs spread out and be fucked by him. He wanted him on top of his body and be repeatedly thrusted up. It would be best if he could see Chu Wanning being fucked by him until he was speechless, until he cried and begged for mercy. He wanted to fuck him until his cock uncontrollably spurted out love liquid it would be best if he didn't have to come out of Chu Wanning's body at all in this life. That would be the ultimate pleasure of the human world. Mo Ran knew that the bottom of his heart was like lava. The jut on his throat bobbed up and down. His black eyes stared at Chu Wanning, warning and pleading, She's on, don't do this. 
Then I'd do something else. Chu Wanning's cheeks were flaming but his eyes glinted stubbornly. Before Mo Ran had time to think as to what he was talking about, he saw him bend down and hold his cock against his mouth. His movements were very fast, not giving Mo Ran a chance to refuse and not giving himself any time to hesitate. He took Mo Ran's ferocious cock in his mouth. Ah! Mo Ran's abdomen suddenly tightened and it was as if lightning had passed through his spine. He closed his eyes instinctively from the pleasure as his fingers threaded through Chu Wanning's long hair. His big, well-knit hands held the back of Chu Wanning's head tightly as his muscular chest heaved up and down violently. Wanning. Tears seeped out of the corners of his eyes. Was it excitement, or gratitude? Was it pain, or pleasure? It was no longer clear. His cock uncontrollably swelled in his lover's mouth, the veins in it were clearly defined. It seemed terrifyingly violent and aggressive. Chu Wanning couldn't fit such a big thing at all, but he still imitated what Mo Ran did to him and licked the cock from the root to its tip. He was so embarrassed that his whole body trembled but his love made his chest warm again. He tried his best to take that huge cock into his mouth but just half of it and it had already reached the back of his throat. The burning sensation made him felt gagged. Mo Ran's heart ached and he hurriedly said to Chu Wanning, Darling, there's no need, just. The other half of his sentence was swallowed by a groan which he couldn't help at all. Because Chu Wanning stubbornly refused to admit defeat, even on bedroom activities. He began to suck and move his head, imitating a thrusting motion. Mo Ran was not an inexperienced person whether in this current lifetime or the past lifetime. He even had more lover as the emperor, Taxian Jun. Those men and women would employ various tricks and served him in all kinds of ways only to fail to make him feel moved whatsoever. However, whenever it was Chu Wanning who was kneeling down between his legs, kissing and sucking his cock, his eyes would roll to the back of his head, his head would go blank, then fireworks would spark colorfully in his mind as he orgasm. It was so exhilarating. Mo Ran couldn't help but tilt his head back slightly, gasping for breath in a low voice. His slender and well-proportioned arms couldn't help but stroke Chu Wanning's long hair as he let out a sexy and deep groan. His Wanning, his Shizun. You hang of the night sky, the Baidu immortal. The most handsome man in the world, the pure and flawless Chu Wanning was willing to do such a thing for him. There was no aphrodisiac, no coercion. It was done willingly. Mo Ran's eyes were wet and his dark eyelashes trembled slightly. It was done willingly. Chu Wanning's technique wasn't good, the control and strength he exerted wasn't right either. Sometimes when he didn't pay careful attention, his teeth would even graze him. However, he couldn't help but surrender under Chu Wanning's ministrations. When he finally released, there were wet tears in the corners of his eyes. He pulled Chu Wanning into his arms and hugged him tightly, kissing him non-stop. He only felt that his heart was so painful but it was also so warm. It was a blissful sort of pain. Wanning. He murmured in his ear again and again, Wanning. Chu Wanning's dark phoenix eyes were moist because of desire. He glanced at him, then lowered his eyelashes as he shyly asked in a hoarse voice, Did you like it? That gentle question penetrated his blood and flesh. The pain cut deeply. Mo Ran hugged him tightly and said slowly, I love it. Chu Wanning's ears turned even redder. He got approval, so he didn't say anything more. Mo Ran couldn't help but stroke his hair, and said softly, I love you. I like you the most. Wanning. There's no one better than you in this world. Other than you, no one can touch my heart. She's un. I love you so much. End chapter. Dumb Husky and his white cat She's un. Chapter 210. She's un's handkerchief can only be given to me. In the middle of the night, Chu Wanning woke up from his light sleep. He noticed that Mo Ran had already gotten out of bed. He had also properly put his clothes on. He sat in front of the table with a single lantern lit. He was currently fiddling with a pile of items. 
the uneasiness and helplessness that shrouded his visage from before had all faded away under the lingering charm of this single lantern. Chu Wanning languidly looked at him for a while and then asked, What are you doing? Shi Zun is already awake. Is it because the light is too bright? No. Chu Wanning asked again, What are you doing? Mo Ran pursed his lips and laughed a little embarrassedly. Chu Wanning got up, put on a robe and walked barefooted to his side. He leaned against the table and watched. It turned out that his Haitang handkerchief was on the table. Mo Ran took the other three plain white handkerchiefs and was currently embroidering the pattern on them. Your embroidering handkerchief. I want Chi Zun to make it only for me. Mo Ran put down the needle and thread. He then put one hand around Chu Wanning's waist. He leaned over and kissed his chest. Chu Wanning had a scar on this part of his chest. Chu Wanning never mentioned the origin of the scar and so Mo Ran didn't ask too much. It was just that when they were skin to skin, he would often subconsciously kiss the spot out of pity. Mo Ran said, I'll do the other's handkerchiefs. In any case, they don't need to know who actually did it. As he spoke, he picked up a handkerchief that had already been embroidered and asked with a smile, She's on, look. Don't you think it's very similar to yours? Chu Wanning sighed, I don't need to look to know it's similar. How could this person be so possessive? Chu Wanning caressed Mo Ran's hair. Mo Ran also smiled and looked up at him. The lights were too dim. Mo Ran's eyes hurt from staying up too long. When he looked up, they were slightly bloodshot, but his face and smile were gentle and bright. Chu Wanning asked, Are you still having those silly thoughts? Mo Ran stared blankly for a moment before replying softly, No, I don't think about it anymore. Right, Chu Wanning said. That's good. Just let nature take its course. Mo Ran seemed to be saying this to himself, but also to Chu Wanning. Let nature take its course. Days such as this were far too rare. He, Mo Weiyu, was not a god. He was just a small duckweed floating in the boundless world of mortals. Everyone had their own selfish thoughts. Giving a person who was about to die of thirst a cup of water, then after taking a sip, asking that person to take the initiative to throw away the entire cup of water and choose to die of thirst this was really too difficult and almost no one in the world could do it. Mo Ran thought to himself, I should drink some more sweet rain. In the future, when he entered purgatory again, it would not be so painful as before. There would be a clear pool of past memories, enough to comfort his dry life. The next day, everyone gathered outside the villa and set off for Mount Jiao together. Villa Master Ma ordered his subordinates to prepare sturdy horses for everyone. In front of the black and gold saddle hung a kinkin bag embroidered with a black cat. Shuemeng sat on the back of the horse and picked up the bag to take a look. He immediately wrinkled his nose in disgust. Suddenly, he heard someone chuckling beside him. This Villa Master Ma's taste is really terrible. It's fine if there's a big-headed cat embroidered on the kinkin bag, but there's also a red horse character embroidered on the back. Interesting. Shuemeng turned his head and saw Mei Hanksyu riding on a tall white horse. He was also fiddling with the bag. He raised his light blue eyes and glanced at Shuemeng with a smile that was not a smile. The water droplet-shaped crystal hanging on his forehead exuded a gentle luster. It swayed, making his face even more charming. Shuemeng rolled his eyes at him and scolded in a low voice, What a scum! The scum only smiled and narrowed his eyes. He was not angry at all. Instead, he said, Young Master Shue, you don't look too good today. Did you not sleep enough? There's a blue halo under your eyes and a black shadow on your forehead. I have some herbal ointment here that can help you sleep. May Hanks you, how are you so free? Shuemeng endured for a while, but found that he could not hold it in anymore. He angrily turned around and said, did the Taxia Palace expel you from the sect? What are you doing here at our Shi Sheng Peak group? My master told me to come here. Mei Hanksyu still had a smile on his face, 
to give your father the concealed weapons he wanted yesterday. Then hurry up and get lost. May Hanks you actually did not get angry with this rebuked. Instead, he smiled and said, and, I'll get lost now. Shuemeng simply felt that this person was sick. The few times he had seen him, he was either as soft as a woman or as cold as a stone. Last time, when he bumped into him at the Rufeng sect, he was secretly mocking him. Today, he had changed into a good person who said, you hit my left cheek, so I'll give my right cheek as well kind of face. Shuemeng couldn't hold back anymore. He turned the reins around and stared at the handsome man on the horse's back. Wait, May Hanks you, I don't have any enmity with you, right? Nope. Then am I very familiar with you? May Hanks you smiled, but did not answer quickly. However, his pair of light-colored eyes shone with a fine light. When the wind blew, his fine golden hair fluttered under the hood. Under the sunlight, the color was even more gentle. Shuemeng did not really want to hear his answer. He frowned and said, after delivering the concealed weapons, get lost immediately. If you want to hook up with people from other sects, I don't care. However, don't think about making a good relationship with me to fish in troubled waters and dirty my little shimmy at Chi Sheng Peak. Mei Hanks Yu did not hold back and laughed out loud. However, he immediately clenched his hands into fists and coughed lightly. He looked at Shui Meng with interest for a while and said, All right. He took the reins of the horse. A silver bell was tied to his white wrist. When the wind blew, it jingled. Mei Hanks Yu smiled and cast a sidelong glance at him as he said, I'm leaving. Shui Meng stared at him. Hurry up and leave. Do you want me to set off firecrackers for you? May Hanks you turned to leave however after taking two steps, he suddenly thought of something and turned his head. Right, there's one more thing. Shuemeng did not want to hear it, but Shuemeng was curious, so he asked irritably, what? May Hanks you smiled slightly and pressed a slender fair finger to his lips. He was really a refined scum, a dressed up beast. He laughed in a low voice and said, you're really ruthless. Shuemeng's face instantly turned green. You. 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 He was completely disgusted. After a long time, he still could not come out with the appropriate word to express his annoyance. This was because there was an order from the sect leaders at the front to assemble and prepare to leave. Mei Hanks Yu smiled and waved at him, urging his horse to go further away from Shui Meng. When Mo Ran rode to Shui Meng's side, Mei Hanks Yu had already disappeared into the sea of people. Mo Ran saw Shui Meng patting his chest in anger and repeatedly retching. Mo Ran was stunned for a moment. Did you eat something bad? Ugh, don't talk to me now. I fucking ate dog shit early in the morning. I. Mo Ran. No matter how hungry you get, don't ever eat dog shit. Get lost. Shui Meng pushed Mo Ran's chest, pushing Mo Ran and his horse away. He was so furious to the point that he is about to ascend to the heavens and reach the second realm of Nirvana. He shouted into the distance with a red face and a thick neck, Ugh. Dog shit. You fucking ruthless. After a while, thousands of people set off from Lonely Mountain and headed towards Mount Xiao. This scene was very rare. After all, everyone usually went out on their swords. Even if they gathered in a large group, they would arrive in an instant. It was rare to see a group of cultivators on horseback. Many of them had never ridden a horse for such a long time. It was fine on the first day, but they couldn't stand it later. Fortunately, Villa Master Mozkinkin Bag had everything. There were pills that could refresh the mind, small fans that could blow in the wind and even a few books made of silk. These books were printed with the prices and appropriateness of various novel goods available in Dobeo Mountain Villa. Shuemeng stared at Villa Master Ma, who was shouting under the shade of a tree while resting. The second richest man in the world was shouting happily and sparing no effort. Gentlemen, gentlemen, if there's any goods you like, 
just tick them in the book. I, Ma, will deliver them one by one when I we back. They came with a guarantee that they could be returned within seven days or exchange within fifteen days. When the immortal tools you ordered arrive, you'll have to pay you in full. Many people really had nothing to do, and Villa Master Ma definitely did it on purpose. Within such big kinkin bags, there was nothing to look at but these booklets. Most really didn't want anything in it but after staring at it for a long time, there would bound to be one or two items that would move their hearts. Even Shwemeng couldn't help but pick up the pen and draw a circle on the words delicious, for all ages, light taste, good choice of ingredients, great increase in spiritual power Nanping Mountain Spiritual Swallows Nest Cake. He finally understood what Mo Ran meant when he said that Villa Master Ma had made a fortune. After seven days of traveling, Villa Master Ma indeed made a lot of money and everyone started to get tired. That evening, they finally arrived at the mountain range leading to Mount Xiao. Dragons have proud bones, I hope you will respect them. Xue Zhenyang looked at the huge rock in front of the mountain range and read the words on the rock. He turned around and asked Nangong Si, Young Master Nangong, what does this mean? Nangong Si said, it means that for the rest of the journey, you must walk on foot. Moreover, from the moment you enter the mountain until the barrier around Mount Chiao opens, you must not speak any profanity. Otherwise, you will be punished. Since Nangong Si gave such a warning, all the sect leaders immediately passed the message down. However, each sect's method of communication was different. The palace master of the Kunlun Taxiu Palace picked up the jade flute at his waist and blew twice. Master Xianjing shook the silver bell in his hand. Zhang Shi stood motionless. It was Hua Binan who passed the message on. Hua Binan waved his sleeve and a cloud of black smoke came out. Upon closer inspection, one would discover that it wasn't actually smoke, but thousands of little flying insects. They all flew to the ears of the Gaiyu Yesek disciples and warned them. Shuemeng was extremely disgusted and said, Han Lin Divine Hand is really weird. Could it be that his entire body is filled with insects? He suddenly thought of something and turned to Shi Mei and said, Speaking of which, you went to Lin Ling Isle to study. You didn't interact with Hua Binan, right? Please don't start playing with insects. I really don't think I can deal with it. Shi Mei turned his head and smiled. Young master, you worry too much. At this time, the Shi Sheng Peak group also began to pass the message. The other sects more or less wanted to show off their skills. Xue Zhenyang, on the other hand, used the sound amplification technique and shouted. After entering the mountain range, don't speak any profanity. If you can't control yourself, use the silence spell to block your mouth. Do you all hear me? His loud voice reverberated through the forest, shaking the trees and stopping the clouds. The echoes lingered in the air. Did you hear that? Do you all hear? Have we arrived? Is that so? All the other cultivators became speechless. End chapter.